Hello, my creative friends. This is Marcia. Welcome back to Markets of Sunshine. I hope you're ready to learn some wonderful techniques with me today. And I'm going to share some slow stitch projects with you and maybe some junk journal projects with you, ideas that you can use for paper crafting or fabric piecing, fabric art, mixed media art. So I hope you'll enjoy this channel and if you learn something new, please feel free to leave me a comment and I hope this is a um, place that you'll find of relaxation and enjoyment and be able to unlock your creativity along with me. I have over 500 videos already uploaded to my channel for you to enjoy. So why not think of taking some time and binge watching videos here on my channel. So there's a wide variety of embroidery and needlework, junk journaling, altered books, the slow stitching, quilting. So I have a really nice variety of different techniques and skill levels for you to be able to enjoy and incorporate. So we all think differently. We all have different um, imaginations and creativity. So I hope that when you're watching my videos that you will find something that unlocks your creativity and helps you to want to improve your skills and don't be afraid of, of making mistakes. Mistakes are good. We learn from our mistakes. So sometimes we can just take a mistake and, and cover it up with something else. So it's not like you have to ditch the whole project and start all over again. So you'll see that in some of my videos where I've made mistakes and I show you how to correct that right in the video. So it's a lot of fun and I hope you'll join me here on my channel. So let's get started and see what I have in store for you today. Okay, so in, this is a new slow stitch kit that I have available in my Etsy shop, Markets of Sunshine. And it is in a wonderful butterfly theme in the colors of blue and purple. And so this kit comes with a em butterfly embellishment that has beaded accents on it and it has a backing of either felt or batting and then it also has a linen piece that has been hand stamped with a butterfly and a piece of batting for the backing and then there's a color of either um, in the purple or blue family of embroidery thread and then there will be be six different fabrics. I have four right here, but there will be six, a total of six. I'm going to collect um, some more in the purple grouping because I do have a purple kit in my shop and I wanted this to be more of a blue. Um, but since the butterfly has a, um, started having a blue purple theme going, so I thought I'll put in two pieces that are in the purple family. And then there are the stick and stitch paper pattern and the cardboard pattern. So this is for applique, this is for embroidery. So that comes with your kit. And then there's ribbons and lace and trim of different colors and white and cream colored. And all of these are vintage, beautiful pieces for you to use and a piece of rickrack. So there's six to eight pieces of this lace. And then there will also be six vintage buttons and different colors. And then I have a wooden button in a Paris theme with a butterfly on it, a metal charm of some sort in a nature theme, and a wood butterfly button as well. And then another piece of vintage linen that has been stamped and I put different words on the linen so you can cut these out. You could use this piece as is and you can add some more 
um, fabric on here, do more slow stitching technique on here. So this is the latest kit, and it's such a beautiful kit. And I really had a lo lot of fun putting this together, putting thought into it, what I was wanted to offer you guys. And I know all of my creative friends are going to love this kit. So each kit comes with a beaded butterfly, like I said. So this one is uh, in different colors. So this one, I still need to add the beads to that. And, um, but this, a beautiful kit, I would consider this a starter level kit. It has just enough supplies um, for you to get your feet wet. And it's not something that's overwhelming. It's uh, something that's an easy project for you to do. So I am going to take one of these groups of supplies and we're going to make something beautiful out of it so that I can give you an idea of what you can do with the supplies. Okay, so now follow along with me while I pack up these kits and get them ready for customers to enjoy all the little charms and floss and linen pieces and I secure them in a clear bag so that when they receive it they see their beautiful goodies right away. I think that is so exciting to be able to know immediately that you're awaited treasures have arrived and all of these are such treasures they're so exciting to use and to make them into something beautiful so we're going to work in our soft slow stitch embroidery book today so what I'm going to do with you from now on is we are going to work in this book together using one of my slow stitch kits and the embellishments that are you can make with it and that way you'll have lots of inspiration so by the time you receive your kit you'll already know what you want to do with it okay so these are set aside and they are ready to go so let me show you what I did so this particular kit in soft book journal is for practicing embroidery stitching and doing your slow stitching techniques. And I have one in pink and I have a kit in purple. So if you didn't see that kit the other day, I have a video showing you that one. So it has purple pages on the inside and purple embellishments. Uh, for the cover so that is available and then you have the pink kit which comes with these fabrics and laces and trims and the batting and felt pages and you can also pick um, flannel pages but I chose to do felt and batting in my book so these first two pages, I used my vintage laces and I practiced some new embroidery stitching and I really had a lot of fun with that. I made this flower out of fabric and I made a yo-yo out of fabric and then I embroidered some leaf pattern here 
and I put some vintage buttons and trim and more lace here and then just a long running stitch and chain stitch and it's just oh so much fun I did French knots here on this so just oh so relaxing super relaxing so I love to work on this when I'm sitting in front of the TV watching one of my programs. So I'm revisiting the Little House on the Prairie series. And um, I follow a shop on Etsy and her Instagram page is um, Carrot Top Shop. And I met her through um, an online course by Renee Christine. So that's, I've met a lot of talented crafters and artisans through the years, through my different courses that I've taken. And she, her shop is all about the classic storybooks <clears throat> of Jane Austen, and the Little House series, the Anne of Green Gables, and those are some of my favorites. <clears throat> I am not a book reader, but I am a movie. <laughs> I am a movie enthusiast, so my daughter is the book reader, and she read all of those stories, and the Nancy Drew series, but I love the movies, so I've watched all the Jane Austen movies, the Anne of Green Gables movies, the Little House on the Prairie series, and so I wanted to, um, I like to watch things that are more uh, family oriented and classics and that align with my values, so it was a toss up between the Anne of Green Gables series again which is not as long as The Little House on the Prairie. So I went back, I, I started with The Little House on the Prairie. And so I'm going to be working in this book tonight while I'm watching The Little House on the Prairie series. And then there's a series that I love on Hallmark that's going to start this Sunday is When Calls the Heart. And it is set in the 1800s. Love that time period um, and the Canadian Mountie and just the whole story of the school teacher and her um, life and what it was like you know living in, in that time period so I just I really connect with that error so these two pages this is the next page in my book that I'm going to work on so what I've done is I pen in the pages that I'm going to sew on next and then I sew the pieces together. So I've done that here. So I'm going to remove the pens so that you can see what I'm talking about. And then, so you see I've already hand sewn, this is by hand this fabric piece here. So what I will do is stitch this onto that felt page and then this one onto the felt page and then over here it will get stitched on and over here it will get stitched on. And then I come and put decorative lace over the top of that to cover up all of those stitches. So what I'm going to do is incorporate now, either on this page or on this page, my butterfly. So this page is birds, so I may do my bird embellishment and put it over here and then incorporate, this is more butterfly, so I may incorporate the butterfly over here more. So I'm thinking that that's, that's what I'm looking like more and it's what I'm leaning toward. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out more around this butterfly. I don't really want all of that extra blue. And you can do yours however you want. 
but this is how I'm going to do mine. So I just want the butterfly to be center stage and I don't want all of the blue And you can use a smaller pair of scissors. I just use a bigger pair because it has that extra hinge spring action and then that makes it easier for me to work with. Okay, there we go. Oh yeah, whoops, cut right into my beads. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't cut them all off. I don't know. Oh, I cut it here. That's what happened. I don't know how. I must have cut into something back there. Okay. So I will have to put the beads back on. Let me see. All right. I don't know if I have enough. Let's see if I have enough. All right. Silly, silly, silly. All right. So what I did is I start back here and these are just seed beads and you have to have a needle that the eye is very small otherwise it won't go through the eye of the needle I usually string these right out of the container, but this is working. Okay. I used purple and blue seed beads. And I'm really trying to um, continue to grow my channel. And so I would appreciate it if you would share the video uh, to your social media that would really help me and to leave a comment and hit the like button that really helps me to get found in search. Appreciate it so much. Okay, so there we go. All right. I think I lost a bead or two somewhere, but I don't know if it went on the page. Okay. There we go. Bring it up so you can see that. So it's very here, right here, right here, and right here. And now I will just secure this on the back. Make sure I'm going through the two loops. Oh. first thing I want to do is to um, attach the page to the other page. And I want a little bigger, but I'm not going to use purple. Okay, so I have white, so I'm going to use the white. I don't like to use a really big embroidery needle. I think the one I use is either a 9 or a 13. And I separate it so that I'm only using three strands. I'm 
recording this video July 28th, 2023. And this is a record breaking year of heat around the world. So I hope you all are staying cool wherever you're watching me from and staying indoors as much as possible and hydrated and all that good stuff to stay safe. And any friends that are watching from Greece or Canada that have had fires, I hope you stay safe there if you have friends there. Any of the other areas that have had flooding. So, I mean, it's just unending what kind of natural disasters that we're seeing taking place. So it's nice to be indoors and safe and sound doing our crafting. Okay, so I'm going to pin this back together. So I'm going to secure it here and I'm going to secure it here. And I'm going to look at it again, make sure it's where I want it to be. So. Yep, okay, it's looking good there. Okay. And now what I do is I am going to come under here and go through to hide the knot. Okay. But then now I can begin, which on this side is going to be a little different than the other side, but that's okay. I can secure it differently there. And I'm just going to do a running stitch, but I'm going through all of the three layers because I have a layer of fabric on the bottom, a felt piece in the middle, and a layer of fabric on top. But I'm making sure I'm feeling that needle with my finger so that it goes all the way through to the other side. And I'm not concerned with my stitches. It's just going to be a running stitch because I'm going to be coming back and embellishing this with lace and trim of different, different uh, widths and such. My main concern is that I'm holding everything in place, smoothing it, making sure I'm feeling it with my fingers on the other side, and making sure it's smooth. I'm trying to make sure I don't have a bunch of wrinkles. turn this over and see what it looks like. So there you have it. So now I can just come back over here and when I put my piece of lace on these two edges, then that's going to cover up and I can put more lace here. I can do more decorative fancy stitching there. Okay, so what I want to do is now I'm going to continue around the edge of this and secure these pages a little more. Again, just making sure I'm keeping them both smooth. The thread comes out quite often. That's okay. 
handy dandy little threader and just re-thread it. I don't know about you, but this happens to me quite often. And even though I put a long tail on it, it inevitably does. over we see we have a nice edge here okay so I just want to keep this a little straighter so I want to see what I'm doing on this side now okay so this side's looking good so now I want to turn it to this side so that I can really see what's going on I can take out this pen and I can keep these pages more in line with each other with what I want, so I'm going to repen this now. Okay, very good. And again, I'm just going to go back and forth, front to back, and I'm sitting in front of a window, so I recommend you have some light coming through in front of you, not behind you, and then you can see very easily where the two pages meet so that you're making sure you're keeping, because on this side, if I turn it over, see it's a shorter, it's closer to the edge here than it is here. So I just don't want to get too close to that edge. So, I mean, as you can see, it, it moves along really fast. It's so easy. And when you put your mind on this, it relaxes you. You can let go of all the stresses of the day. And you're just focusing on your wonderful, beautiful stitches. And I just wrote a blog post about this. And if you want to read that, you can go over to my blog at sunshinemakersclub.com and you can also join sign up for my mailing list and you get to um, get all kinds of VIP perks you get a 25% off coupon code to use in my Etsy shops and just lots of fun things that I offer From that. Take this pin out now. Okay, so we did secure this side, the top, this side, and I just have to secure the bottom. And then I can start adding in the embellishments. Now what I'm going to do on this is a little different than what I did on the first two set of pages. Oh, there's those other two beads. Uh -huh. Okay, so I just added lace on top and then just, you know, obviously secured that in place and then I came in with my embroidery stitch practicing. So every page is a new embroidery stitch. So I look up the stitches and because there's so many embroidery stitches out there. And so the ones that I already know, then I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I incorporate those, like the French knot, you know, your basics, chain stitch, all that kind of thing, back stitch, split stitch, you know, those are your basics that you start off learning. Lazy Daisy, and but then I find ones I don't know. And those are the ones that I incorporate in. And then what I'm going to do also is in one of my junk journals, I'm going to write down the name of those stitches. Or I might make a little pocket 
and <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I was thinking I might make a little pocket on each page and then put in, or maybe the front here, maybe I'll make a pocket here and then have a little uh, handwritten note as to what the stitches are on each page. So I haven't quite decided how I'm going to do that, but I'm thinking that might be a fun way to document the stitches. Page one, borrow stitch, you know, that kind of thing. Fishbone. Turn your book however you need it to go and secure these pages. There we go. I like that. Okay. So for here, I'm going to get a piece of the lace and then I'm going to put that down this side. Let me see if I have anything in my right here beside me. might work. Perfect. I like it. Look at that. Okay, so now you see something like this. Okay, so with a ruffle and then it covers up this two seams. And look at how beautiful this is going to turn out. So now what I'm going to do is get a pen it into place. There we go. Okay, so now look at that. Isn't that just so pretty? So this page up against this page is just really nice. Okay, so now where am I? top. So I'm going to have to move the book in an awkward back and forth. This is when it comes in handy if you're ambidextrous. And I think we learn how to be when we are in the world of crafting because it takes two hands to do what we're doing. You have to hold your embroidery hoop and then with one hand and your needles in the other hand and your quilt blocks and paper. Oh, there's that thread wanting to go through there again. Ah, man, I caught it just in the nick of time. And the last Saturday of every month, I host a craft time with sisters, and I am so excited. Tomorrow is my time with my sisters, and I just love it. So I encourage you to host something like that with your friends on Zoom, and I it's a a set. I've been doing this now for two years. It's the last Saturday of every month. So they look forward to it. I look forward to it. And it's just been wonderful to keep us connected and just so much fun. And to have a crafting buddy is just wonderful. So exciting. I love it. So thank you to all my dear sisters that are watching that have supported me in that and who have invited new ones to join us. All right, looks like I got some kind of a loop-de-loop -loop going on right there, but I'll fix that when I get to that page. See when I talked about mistakes in the beginning? <laughs> 
Well, when I get to that page, we'll find out what kind of a boo-boo it was, and then I'll show you how to fix it. Some boo-boos you have to start over, but most boo-boos you can, I call them boo-boos, you, uh, you can fix it. All right. Oh, this is so pretty. I'm so excited. Love it. Love it. Okay, so what I want to do, I'm going to come back through here, but I want to knot it. Okay, I'm going to finish it up. I'm going to come under here. Go into this page underneath this piece of fabric. There we go. Do two. Okay, I'm going to put it in here now. There we go. Alrighty. Oh, that is so fun. Okay, so this is the, the not loopy thing that happened, but that's fine. It's cute. Isn't that cute? I think it's cute. And I'll just put some lace over that anyway, so it's not going to matter. And so now here we have it. So quick and easy. I've secured those fabrics. I've added this darling eyelet ruffled trim. So now it covers up the seam and it looks so pretty. It just all flows really nicely into that page. And then now this page, I have it secured. So these two pages are now secured. So I have first page and the second page, and now I can come and sit down in front of my TV and put Little House on the Prairie on, and I will do some embroidery stitches and practice on those. And then I will show you what I did in the next video. I gotta hold it up here because the sunlight now is coming through that window. So isn't that pretty? Oh, I love that on there. Down here, oh, that would look pretty on the solid. I think I, yeah, I think I'll put it on the solid. Over here, just a little too busy. Okay, so now that's where it's gonna go. It's gonna go right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a cluster so I'll, I'm going to get some lace and other beautiful embellishments and put behind this butterfly. And then in the next video, I'll show you what I did and we'll secure it. So thank you for being here with me today on my channel, Markets of Sunshine. And I hope you will follow along and join my creative community and subscribe. So I have another page to do and then I'll start adding more fabric right along with you as I pick them out. I'll show you and we'll secure them and I will sew them into place. So stay safe, keep creating in the sunshine, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.